do is take my legs back, and I'm gonna regain or capture that knee line and pull it in nice and tight and get to my figure four. Okay? So that back step motion to capture the knee line and get to our figure four for our cross ashi here is, is gonna be the emphasis of the whole hour. So it's really, really important we get comfortable grabbing that leg. So the way we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it from guard. So she handles everything from guard passing, we're gonna set from our butt, because that's how real men lift. Uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna start off in like a half butterfly, okay? So if you're on your knees, I'm gonna have one leg inside, hold you down, right? and one leg outside, right? Just like this. So we can start from butterfly guard if you want. <laughs> we're just gonna work one leg to the outside with a deep underhook on the same side as the exited leg. Right. So for the first one, we'll keep it real simple. All I'm gonna do is try to drive into my, apart or my, my opponent here and get that leg reaped. So I'm gonna drive back and capture here. All right. So all we need him to do is post that arm. I can't sweep him that direction, but I can get him to elevate his heel off his butt. And ultimately, all of our leg locks come from our opponent having a gap between their heel and their butt. All right, so he's trying to keep his heel to his butt and keep his legs safe. I'm trying to expose that gap. So, we have a little butterfly with double unders. Cross out, hand to the mat, right? Nice strong structure here. All I want to do is have to break him down away from me. And I step back. Once I have that knee line, bring my legs together, and I just sit back. back. Really good, right? Oh my god, okay. One more time. So, butterfly guard, double underhooks. One leg goes to the outside. I cheat myself to that same direction, nice and deep here. All right? All I have to do is get him to raise this leg by getting his left side heavy. Now I step behind and sit back. This is easy. <laughs> Any questions? Is it your right leg that's causing you to roll as you bring the knee in? Um, yeah. After you've already, after you've already back stepped and connected. Sure. Yeah. And the knee, and that's what's causing you to lose base and roll that way. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So as I as I have my under my left arm, my left side butterfly, and drive forward, this can step behind. Now I can turn my hips to cause him to sit back. Now, a lot of times, I'm a small guy, right? So if a big guy stays quartered, you know, I have to kind of victor roll underneath them and make it work that way. But let's keep it real simple for this one and just have them assist our roll. Any other questions? All right, let's try that and then we'll fix all the problems. All right, ready? I like to show things in three or four different ways. And so uh, we have ways to make this technique work regardless of how our opponent reacts. Having said that, the path that I choose, I don't ever choose. Okay, so I will give a feed, my opponent's reaction will dictate how I transition from there. Okay, so kind of a traditional jiu-jitsu style is have a plan in mind and force your power on top of somebody else and like I'm gonna do it no matter what you do. Um, for me, it's more a matter of I cast this broad net, and it's my job to be intelligent enough to have enough options to utilize any movement you make. Right? So it, it, one's not white, right, white, one's not wrong. It's just different. So it's pretty tough for me at 135 pounds to impose my will. Right? I can do it, but it gets harder and harder. So we're looking at a scenario in which top player is not giving us a, a, full, a forward pressure. Right? He's not buying into this hole, I'm trying to sweep him this way. And so I'm going to step down on my inside foot and I'm going to really start to drive him over. Like really hard. So much so that if he doesn't respect it, I'm going to sweep him with it, with this bully sweep. Right? So I go to transition up, I'm going to push. I want that because now when he pushes back into me to square back up, that's when I can catch him. Right? Once we're here, that's when I can make my transition gather my legs and have position. Does that make sense? So it really, really is important that our opponent is doing the right thing. 
if they get dummied over and they just pull over, so just follow this time, right? And so we're in this, and I just get swept over. I'm in a perfect knee cut, right? If I if he gets dummied over and we start our knee cut and he pinches my ankle, the same thing happens. We're right back where we were. So he's not going to just get pushed over though. But I need him to I need him to react as if he was going to do that. So we talk about faking a, a, a sweep to get a submission. We can't fake a sweep, right? We have to really make sure that we're selling the sweep. We're trying for the sweep. And we're hoping that they defend it. But if they don't, that's still our plan A, is that sweep, right? So if we are able to get some elevation because the person is trying to drive forward, the same technique works. Right? I'm going to base out with an open shoulder, that way he can't just push me to my back. And we call it false frame, right? So if he pushes in, he thinks he has resistance, then he doesn't. So we pull that frame out, that lets him drive into me. I'm going to underhook with my free arm. My legs are just going to do this. He's going to fall right into honey hole, and I can lock up, and then the second leg is like sitting up. The, re the, the way this fails with most students is they do too much work with their legs. Right, they end up pulling themselves all the way out of the saddle and they end up in some weird position. So just take your legs and go straight to the sky. So we're sitting in our half butterfly with a deep underhook. We're driving forward. We have an open shoulder to make sure we have a nice strong structure. When we're ready, we're going to dive under and just lift both legs up. He'll fall into your lap. We gather both legs. I'm still hugging around his kidney area, right around his waist. I just sit up with it. Once I'm ready to attack, I can pull my secondary arm out to uh, attack the heel over it. We're going to do an ALT lock, and so we'll get there after we get into this position. One more time with the partner. Same position, All right? He's driving forward. When I'm ready, my free arm, my right arm, just dives underneath. Right? From here, I'm just going to lift both legs up. So it really is less is more. Right? Make sure our legs are lifting up. He's keeping the wizard the way through there. If he pulls that out and tries to post, does that interfere at all with what you're doing, or is it just the same process? All right, so he pushes in. If he pulls that wizard out, so you can still get it right oh, there. I mean, the more he posts, the more he separates himself from the defense. All right? And so uh, everything's still the same. We're just nice and mellow. We gather our secondary leg. What happens? Any other questions? Anyone? Let's try. <laughs> All right, ready? But he's really heavy here, you know. And so what Craig does, he just talks about getting underneath and just really going for it. You know? And we can usually make that work as long as we're willing to really dive under ourselves to get into our position. Right, but it, 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 it's a big commitment. And at that point, we're in a spot where, um, you know, those positions where you feel like you have an advantage but you don't really are like the most dangerous places in jiu-jitsu. You, you feel like you have it. You know, like oftentimes when you see an arm triangle choke from top, especially like in like MMA, they freeze there. And like, you know, you can't finish that choke, but how the hell do you leave it? You know, and so you, you know you can't finish it, but if you let go, He's gonna get your back or some weird scramble you don't like, you know. So this is one of those scenarios which you're in a good spot and you're almost there, but he might sprawl and take your back, right? And so we've got to really make sure we're are, we're always in the right placement. And so realistically, he's never on top of me. As I go to make my dive, he's driving into me. I want him to go over top, but like never having downward pressure. So I go to make my turn underneath, he's already on this side of me right away. And that's because my head comes out to the safe side. So I'm not doing this really, really big like 180 underneath him, like deep half guard, but I'm just getting my head clear just enough that as I elevate, as he drives forward, I'm not here, right? I never want him on this near side of me. This is where we get smashed into this position. So it's really important my head transitions to the far side as fast as I can because now, once he crosses that middle line, 
it's very hard for him to fall back to the danger side. He will almost always fall down to my safe side, his danger side. So it's really important to get used to that concept. He drives, we make this dive, right? And the weight's already gone. So my head immediately comes past his kidneys to his stomach, all right? I do leave my arm in here, so I don't want him running away from it right away, okay? A lot of good guys, they know they're gonna hide their heel, they're looking to get away. Yeah, I try to move the even if I get double trouble and he gets his head really far away from turning away, this has to be bad for me. So I do like keeping the arm in as long as possible, right? Between up here, and now I can start collecting that leg, and I'm not gonna leave that body control until I'm ready to submit, okay? So once we get to that position, I'm not yet gonna go for the heel hook. I'm gonna look for an aoki lock first. And so all that is, is it really is a heel hook, right? It's an inside heel hook on the secondary leg. And we do it through like a modified straight ankle lock grip. So I have the straight ankle lock grip, just like normal. And I can ankle lock here, and some guys will tap to this, but it's not a real submission really. Just like the stupid Texas clover leaf. That's not a real submission, that's bullshit. So, <laughs> so all I'm gonna do is let his heel slip, okay? So I want his heel to go in here. Sorry. Right, so I have his, <laughs> so I have his arch just below my boob when I get my grip. I almost always will go to like a rear naked choke style grip. I love this grip for everything, right? This way I know my body's connected to him and I'm not using any arm strength to submit him, right? I'm gonna flex my lat and drive his big toe to the ground and his heel to the ceiling. Right? It's a great submission because a lot of guys think that this leg is pretty safe. Right? But he, he can't run away from me because I have the, the, the 411 on the inside leg. The outside leg, nice and tight. So we end up in our saddle with double trouble. We overhook the outside leg to like a straight ankle lock. Right? I go straight to my rear naked choke grip from here. And I'm going to shrug my shoulders forward and pop the shoulder out or pop the heel out. Once the heel comes out, I tighten nice and tight. All right, I can feel his arch across my ribs, just under my boob. I'm gonna drop my shoulder, heel to the ceiling. All right, it's a really, really, really uh, a sneaky one, really, because the guys think they're okay. So from the beginning, just so we can practice getting into it. Nice and strong here, I'm pushing back in here. It's not a big lift, right? So it's not, it's not a butterfly elevator. All I'm gonna do is come underneath. Capture. Sit up. Your naked choke. Shrug to the inside. Sorry. So you're doing a bit of. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so with those finish, with huh? the finish, you're doing a bit of a side crunch as you kind of lean back. Yeah, I think about really like I want to press my shoulders down mm -hmm. to drop his his big toe to the floor, right? And then I'm gonna raise. So I have your naked choke grip. I'm gonna be like this motion, right? So I mean, it really is an inside heel hook. I just have a different grip on it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so when I have, when I have the ankle lock, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm nice and tight, but I'm gonna drive everything forward. Yep, I'm gonna push it forward. And I'm gonna drop my, so I, I, I wanna feel for it. I want this to slip the same time as I'm pushing down, right? If I just let it slip and he pulls it out, it's gone, right? And so I wanna shrug forward and down, and then back in. And now I can feel, like I'm like, the, the bend of his heel right here, I'm driving into it. So I'm really hugging his body, his foot close to my body, and keeping it really tight. From here, I'm just gonna shrug my shoulder down, and that's enough right there, right? If I relax this grip, and I just have it, like it'll work, but like it's crazy, right? So pull everything in. And now it's now the night. The hips are always the first tile. The hips elevate a little bit, and they're like, oh shit. Right? So now I can add my tension to it to go. Yeah? Anybody else? Sweet. Let's no, oh, sorry. The shrugging aspect one more time. Yeah, like, of course. Of course. <laughs> It, it, it's a really small movement, but it's really important, right? So you're right. So I have him, the heel's all the way in, right? I'm gonna push nice and tight, so I'm like scissoring on his shin. I'm gonna shrug forward and down, and that's it. 
right? He usually is okay with that initial like move, yeah, right? And so even if he tries to like go boot, I'm just gonna move my body around it, okay? And so if I can't push his leg forward, I can shrug and move myself around and catch again. And now once I have him, he's like stepping on my chest, I'm gonna pull him in nice and tight. All right, now I'm hugging as hard as I can hug, and we start adding our attention. Yes, yeah, I help? Yeah, thank you. It, it, it's gonna feel fun, right? It's a really finite movement, but it's, it's really critical we understand how that goes in and out. Make sense? Cool, let's do it. Ready? For me, is the same as we do for, for a lot of our submissions, right? I always want to bring my head to the limb that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to finish. Okay, so if I do an arm bar and my chin is not touching their knuckles, then I'm, I'm wasting a lot of space. Okay, the same thing here. I want to bring everything into it and then use my core to make the submission happen. Okay, I never want to use my arms for submissions. Right? It's like an 80 20 rule where like our body and our legs are doing 80% of the work and our hands are just kind of peripherals, right? Like our hands are kind of directing what's happening, but they're not really great for breaking things. Right? Um, even a really big, strong guy, my legs are probably stronger than his arms. Right? So I don't rely on arm to arm strength. If I have a submission, I can adjust all I want, but I never want to bring my body away. Right, much like a straight ankle lock, if I'm doing this with a straight ankle lock, then I'm messing a lot of things up. Right? I want to bring everything to it, and I want to keep this same tension. And I only want to move away if I move everything away together. Okay? So when I go Aoki lock here, I'm in, I have the heel, it's not quite exposed yet, it's still tucked like a straight ankle lock. I'm going to push it forward, and I'm going to tighten up everything here. So I'm like literally shoulder to shoulder. I've got very long monkey arms, so it looks like it's easy, but it's not. So maybe you get to here, but the higher I can get, the better. I'm gonna crunch my whole body to it. Now as I move away, if I let this happen, then I moved away with no tension, okay? So collapse, control everything, and then we start pulling away, and then we have our whole body using, you know, using our hips, using our core, to get that submission to happen. As we fall to the side, we can, the same thing, right? Yeah, it's pretty nasty from here. So I'm probably never gonna finish it like this, sitting on my butt, it's kind of strange. Right, usually I'm gonna have it here, slip it, right, and we're looking to add it into there. So, if we can't get the rotation we need, we can adjust two things. One, I wanna turn his foot more perpendicular to my spine by pushing the heel through more and capturing more of it. The more perpendicular his foot is to me, the nastier the, the AC, or the, the inside heel hook is. I bring everything to it now, right? I'm closing all that space. I'm pinching my legs so we can't run away from it. And now as I go to rotate, nothing collapses or no nothing expands, right? I'm just gonna move. But my arms, everything stays right with it. I have a ton of rotation left there before I have to resort to, you know, looking, right? You know, so think about really bringing yourself to the solution, okay? The last thing is if we want to switch to like a Texas Clover or a straight ankle lock, we can't. But really, we're looking at heel hooks from here. All right, nine out of 10 times, if you're allowed to reach, you're allowed to heel hook. And so we probably should be looking at inside heel hooks for, for really our, our, our big break and finish. Um, Aoki lock's awesome. Can't quite get it. He's doing a good job of booting, and I just can't push through. That's what we're looking to feed ourselves through. Okay? But the same mechanics apply. As I go to heel hook, I want his foot perpendicular to my spine always. So if he ballerina toes, uh, even if I get a good heel cup here, I don't have a ton of heel exposure. I might be able to catch it, but his leg's starting to get straight. If his leg can fully straighten, now when I go to heel hook, he has rotation in his hip and his knee and his ankle. All that slack makes it really hard to finish the heel hook, okay? So as we go for this, big kind of, it, it's really, it's definitely over-exaggerated. All right, I don't want to just cut his heel. Like I want to drive a big circle and I want to push down, all right? So I'm trying to bring my elbow to my hip and really get that heel as big as I possibly can. And I want to push his toes back towards his own hips through my hips, all right? So I'm really exposed, sorry, I'm sorry. So the more I, the more I flare here, flex his toes back towards his body, the less I have to rotate rotation, 
right? The biggest fault we see in inside heel hooks especially is if I have a loose bite, and you go ahead and point to a little bit here, and I rotate, what does he want to do right now? Step over, right? I'm pushing him in the direction he wants to go anyway. So I don't want him to want to rotate, okay? So the biggest like misconception about heel hooks is that we're gonna grab the heel and rotate over. All right, I don't want to roll over. All right, that's when you see those gator rolls out of bounds and the guy loses it. So I'm gonna keep a hold nice and tight. I'm gonna drive back. I'm gonna flex his toes as much as I possibly can. All right, and now when I have everything ready to go, I just add a small hip motion into it. It makes him not really want to roll as much, and that's what we're looking for, right? Then so we capture the heel, we get our grip. I like to have my secondary break arm parallel to his shin. All right, my hip, we roll, all right? If we, yeah, so even here, it's pretty hard for him to step over because I'm keeping the down bridge. All right, so it's, it's it's really confusing because we, we often are taught we should be twisting the leg apart. And it's not a twist of the leg, okay? We're looking to build tension in the leg and then expand the leg, and that's where everything pops, okay? If you want to know me. All right, and so if we're looking at a heel hook and I can get my leg straight, go ahead. All right, go. Go, go. All right the leg is upside down and it's okay, right? We're, we're in good shape here because the leg is just, everything's, Right, right, my leg feels really, really good. And so, but if you just relax, you understand that like the, the mechanics aren't there. We're not trying to twist the foot apart. We're looking to get a bend and you go ahead. We're gonna, yeah, you, right? Yeah, right, so it can go pretty far. The second you add a bend in it and a bend in the foot, now it can't have the same, yeah, that fucking sucks, right? And so two things happen here. One, the foot gets flexed, which makes my heel much bigger. Very hard to slip this heel, right? Two, he's pushing my leg into each other, into itself, okay? So he's driving me into a more compact leg, which locks out all of the things, right? So the hip gets locked, the knee gets locked, the ankle gets locked, and now the break is really easy, right? Now it almost becomes like an arm bar or a knee bar break where he can use his pelvis forward and hip into me to cause that, to cause that break. He's not relying on just twisting my leg apart, okay? If my leg gets straight, there's very little chance we're gonna get heel hooks from here, all right? And now it's really easy for me to step over and start dissecting his, his heel hook, okay? So we're always getting to double trouble. The LP lock fails because maybe it's just too deep. We start separating. I'm gonna switch to an inside hook with my top arm. I'm gonna grab his hamstring and hold it, all right? Come on push that heel flat, and I want to think about making his legs short by driving his toes to his butt, and then we add our tension. Sorry. Any questions? Yes? So do you not like to uh, finish from the left hip? I do, it's, it's just, it's hard to show it that way, because it's really tight. Uh, would you say there's more of a chance of rolling out? There, 100%. Yeah, I mean, if I can, so the, the question, if I finish from the far hip, Right? This becomes really hard to keep him from stepping over. Or if you bring, go to like, uh, like kind of like Lotus with your uh, left foot. Here, that's the escape I see the most often happen. Right? I'm kind of feeding right into that. Now you can use this leg to start extracting his knee, and we lose everything from there. Right? So if I can get to this position, it's much stronger for me. And I feel like the knee flare is what keeps him from rolling, right? I have, there's no need to pinch his thigh here, guys. All right, this, that feels different, right? When I come here, I can flex, and I can really put this frame up to keep him, one, getting too close to me to grab me, all right? And two, it just helps me to stop him from rolling. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we can absolutely finish it from this side, but I'm, I'm giving him half of his escape already. All right, so if I come to this side, we can look to build it. And create a lot more tension. Yeah? We use the mat as well. On his heel, as opposed to having the heel so exposed, we'll roll back and kind of put it until you got more on one side than the other. Yeah, it depends on what his reaction is. Okay. So if I have to really chase that heel, yeah. you know, if he's doing a really good job of hiding his heel, you know, and then I have to come all the way up and I do this, you know. Exactly, right? It all depends on where his heel is, but if I have to, my head's going to the mat and I'm hopping over to grab it. Yeah. So if I, if I get quick heel exposure right away, 
that we don't need to, right? But if I have to chase it, I have to chase it. I just don't want to end up going all the way over, right? And so I'm thinking about making that lift to chase it, but then still flexing and getting into this break from here. Yeah? Anybody else? The direction of your hips, the hip pressure, can you yeah. explain that a little bit? Yeah, for sure. So um, the reason I open my thigh is to keep my hips up all, all in the right, cross, right direction. All right, and so I want to have this position right here. So I have an inside triangle, all right, inside sinkaka. I have a flared top leg. Now I have everything I need. Sorry, I'm just gonna like grab your heel, right? And so now it's, it's not, um, I say it's not, but you will end up rotating to finish this, but it's not ideal, right? Ideally, we build enough tension that we just add a little bit of hip into it, and it becomes more of a knee bar, like a side kind of knee bar, than a heel hook, okay? So if I build enough tension throughout his leg, then I add a little bit of hip pressure in this direction, then the inside pops pretty easy, right? The, the, the beauty of that is we're not encouraging him to roll, right? If I can keep this leg here, now it's much harder for him to step over and roll because he's got to roll through a bend in his knee, right? So it's, it's kind of like he has this, this 45 degree angle leg going through two parallel lines and it's kind of hard to get through that. And so I want to keep that bend and be nice and tight here so it's, it's, a, it's, it's a hip forward pressure more than it is a lay back and rotate pressure. So is it a counter pressure? The hips are going towards me. I'm driving towards you, example. correct. Then, yep. But, I'm, but I'm, the, 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 the perfect heel hook, we build enough tension here that we don't move our upper body at all. Right? Going back to that same idea of not using our upper body. And all it is is this pressure to make it finish and not this pressure to make it rip off. Having said that, you'll see a lot of guys just twist the foot because in the heat of the moment, it feels good to twist the foot, right? <laughs> and so, um, but, but it, it's, not, it's not perfect, right? It works, but it's not perfect. Does that help? Yeah? Yes, sir. Anybody else? All right, um, don't hurt anybody. <laughs> my, at my gym, we teach, why, we teach white belt heel hooks, right? It's, it's, uh, if your first day and I'm planning heel hooks, you're learning heel hooks in your first day. Right? I think that it's important that we understand what our threshold is and, and, and they are going to be a thing in your life eventually. And so it's really important to learn them now. Um, but make sure as we roll with them, um, I want to say before I end, if we're rolling for heel hooks or for leg locks in general, I have two big rules. Right? Um, the first rule is if I've got my opponent or my training partner and he's dead to rights, um, I'm not going to injure him under any circumstance, right? The second is if he escapes because I let him escape, I'm not gonna say, yo, I had that. I'm gonna let him escape and go on and do my thing, right? There's no, there's, there, there's no room for that. Um, obviously, once you guys have close training partners, you guys can have that discussion. But if I'm rolling with somebody, um, you know, even one of my students, I'm gonna let them escape and they're gonna think they escaped and that's okay with me, right? That's how we can continue to play leg locks and have no one get hurt and just make it fun. It's just catch, catch and release, catch and release, catch and release. When you watch a professional grappling event, most guys will give their opponent an out once they capture the heel. It very rarely does somebody grab a heel and twist. Right? Usually the person who's getting got knows positionally that they're dominated and it's time to end their match. Right? So that's why you see not a lot of injuries really at the professional level because they are good. Having said that, if I give him an out, or if I wait and he escapes and I catch him again, I'm not going to wait <laughs> in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a professional setting. So um, just make sure we're being super cautious about partners. I don't think heel hooks are anything to be afraid of. I don't think they're more dangerous than an arm bar. They're just not as numb, right? So ignorance causes injuries. So, make sense? <laughs>